right, let's start. Welcome to Still Untitled, The Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. <laughs> I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm Norm. <laughs> Maniacal. Actually, uh, Lynn Manuel said that he makes a, a "It's an Amadeus" reference at oh. the end of. Of course, it is. It, it's. Uh. I tried. I spent a, more time than I care to admit trying to clip out just the Jonathan Goff titter at the end of that song for a ringtone. Oh mm. wow! Yeah. You know, that is a role where when you're listening to the libretto of Hamilton, the, the, the King George stuff gets a little tiring because it's the same song three times. Mm-hmm. I think it's only twice on the score, it's on the soundtrack, times. right? It's, it's three times? No, it's three times. It's three times. That's well, like part of a medley in one of them, though. No, no, it's no. three. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's almost they're almost. It's, and it's the same exact song. Mm-hmm. And you see, when you're listening to the libretto, I feel like you could skip past it. However, in person, Josh Groff is absolutely fucking electric. Like, holy cow! And there is an amazing, amazing video you can find on YouTube of him at a fundraiser, fronting a bunch of dancers. Uh, and singing Anything Goes. And I'm getting chills I'm about to tell you about this. And I haven't mentioned this on the podcast. Okay. Totally worth going to see. Like, finding on YouTube and watching. It's like 15 minutes long. It's amazing. First of all, he can sing and he can dance as well or better than all of the supporting dancers that he's with, right? So he's one of them. He's not just a star that's being well-supported. Second of all, he's super generous with all of them. So they bring on more and more dancers. That's kind of the point of this routine is that it starts off really personal and becomes this elaborate showpiece, but everyone's in like work clothes and normal street clothes. He is so charismatic. It is. It mm. makes you just feel good about the world when you're done with this thing. Hmm. And I've I've watched it three times. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's incredible. And what jo- what Groff does with King George with the little tiny, it's very subdued, tiny it's... little when he's like, "You'll be back," and he starts yeah. to move dun, his shoulders, dun, and the dun, audience dun. is roaring. Dun, yes. dun, 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 because when dun, you listen to it just dun. on the album, it's tough to visualize one that costume. Yeah, and then two how. What contrast, because it's a slow walk at, compared to the big set pieces that come right before it. Oh, and when is the second time or the third time? I think it's the second time he comes out. He's he's literally, his, he's like dejected because he's lost the mm-hmm. war. Yep. And he's dragging his scepter. Right. Aww. And it's the funniest. Poor King George. It's the funniest physical comedy because he's, he's rigidly moving in just a very prescribed way so that every move he does off that line is hilarious. And yeah, it's a very it's great breaking of the fourth wall when he joins the audience yes. in the third yes. to, to yeah. watch the, yeah. the interpersonal conflict. Um, <sighs> anyway. I wanted to... So, um, <laughs> um, fellow haver of children. Yes. Um, I a, Dad here. A, a fellow dad. I experienced a milestone yesterday. You sent your kids to school for the first time. No. Uh, thing two... Moved to another city. What? Yeah. He's now living down south in Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. He's in his new apartment. He oh, man. left yesterday in his that car. Is a, that is a reasonable distance. It's <laughs> not cross country. No, it's, it's a just long way, far though. enough. But, um, yeah. So, so, okay. For East Coast people, they're yeah. thinking, oh, Los Angeles is how far away? 368 miles. It's That's about a five long hour way. drive. It's, yeah. a long, it's, it's farther than driving to Cape Cod from New York City. Yeah. Like, I, when I first moved, I went to college and I moved um, 300 miles, 250 miles. Right, right. Which was a, like, it was a four hour drive, right? And, yeah. And that seemed like a good amount of distance to me, 19 year old me, 18 year old <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. Um, and then it was, it was it, like, that was good. That's a big day. I want to tell you, I did not deal with it gracefully. Did you cry? I, I, I got weepy. I, yes, I did cry. I didn't cry in front of him. I mean, I. Oh, my dad cried in front of me. I, I was, so at one point we're moving stuff back and forth all weekend. Yeah. The whole weekend was about this move. And at one point I'm like, I'm getting i'm pissed off and i'm not yelling but i'm super mad and my son goes i don't understand why you're being so irrational because you are being irrational right now and i said i'm freaked out that you're leaving and he went oh <laughs> yeah i mean okay. it's it's one of those things they that don't like, have that perspective it's a great new adventure well, for right them. yeah I, yeah i mean it's it's a moment that they've been working toward like i I'm in a weird place because I'm 42 years old. I can remember the day that I left yeah. to go to go to school. You and me both. 
as if it was like, well, what is it? Stephen King says we we picture ourselves in our heads forever as we were when we were nineteen years old. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. And and yeah, I remember getting in the car. And did you drive him down, or did he drive himself? No, he oh, drove himself. That's even worse. Yeah, and you had the help of the moving. You facilitated. I facilitated some of the moving out of San Francisco. I was really clear that I did not want to help with the move. Move I'm, in. I'm a schmuck. I hate moving. I hate helping people move. Hey, hey, it's the reason. Friends, right? It's the if reason. Ready to move. It is the reason that then, I never ever bought a pickup truck. <laughs> it's you want to be that guy? Yeah, you don't want to be the pickup no, truck guy. Oh, no, no yeah. poor Drew. Never. I ne- on my first car was a Volvo station wagon because it was the it could fit a four by eight of plywood in the back. Drew, we have a, we have a friend <laughs> Drew uh, who is actually the white guy blinking meme. Mm-hmm. You've yeah. seen the white guy blinking. On, on the internet, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that's yeah, our friend yeah. Drew. Um, <laughs> shout out to Drew and Cloth Map. He makes awesome mm-hmm. travel documentaries about video game stuff. Um, but he bought a pickup truck, and it was this like a swarm of people. When he said, "Hey guys, I got a new car. I got a pickup truck." Like fifteen people this we never seen before came out. We're like, "Hey, what are you doing next weekend?" I, I we just were talking about how what a what a what a what a violent question. What are you doing tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, it's unkind. No, yeah, that's not the, the question. The question is, would you like to do something tomorrow with me? Mm-hmm. Here is the plan I exactly. have. Let me know if this appeals to you. But the, what are you doing tomorrow? It's like, fuck you. What do you got? Well, <laughs> okay. the, the power dynamic. Every conversation is a power Sorry, dynamic. Sorry, I'm cursing a lot. I'm freaked out that my son's so, left. It's, it's uh, The other thing, oh. thing one is here. He's working in a restaurant and he's happy as a clam. I'm just, I like, I'm, I'm watching my friends send their five-year-olds off to kindergarten. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. It's over. But that one, it really uh, is over. You, he's when never going to come back to the house. Kindergarten, you're just gonna, you know, have to sit through a bunch of really, really terrible concerts oh, okay. for the next I'm 12 fine. years. I, I don't know. I'm fine with that. I have a phone. <laughs> By then, the earbuds will be small enough you'll be yeah, able to see them. Hold your be... phone up, but not yeah. to videotape, but so the AR can give you the fancy yeah. to something to look exactly. at. I just watch yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, I got a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> it's obscuring the, the parts that I don't want to see of this play. You remember, by the way, mentioning oh. at the last tested live show that some, or two tested live shows ago, someone had turned the Castro Theater into a Pokestop. Yes. That yeah. was th- that was thing two. Oh, really? Wow. He did nice. that. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that wow. happened yesterday and um yeah, it's an intense thing. I you mean, know, they're 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 young adults now. They're 18. They're you have a free room. Uh, I have a free room. Oh really? Boy, yeah, it's what's it doing tomorrow? It's gonna become a cra- <laughs> it's a craft room and guest room already. Um, already. I mean, already. But it, it's it's one of those things that when you're 18, you're in the least probably self-aware at least I was the least self-aware I would be for my entire life when I was 17 or 18 years old. God, it's helpful most, to hear that. Most tied up in my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the most definitely the most modest I ever was too. But but like like you know, I you were I was so fixated on what was happening to me that I didn't even consider the impact it was having on my mom and dad. And, like, I had the biggest fight I'd ever had with my mom two days before I moved out to go to college. Right, yeah, totally. Because she was, she was like you said, she was really upset that I was leaving. She thought that our lives were going to change. And that and in, in, in reality, I was never, like, it was never exactly the, you know, you come back and it's never exactly the same. You're there for three months, not, you, it's not your house. Right. That degree of empathy that kids have at that stage, it's still very self-centered. And, look, it's, it's. Well, it's know, a huge. Mo- it's the biggest thing that's ever happened to them after being born. At that yeah, point, mm-hmm. it is. And you know, it's, it's, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Um, it, it. I am. I. I'm so proud of them. I could burst. It is. It's funny that makes me feel older than turning fifty three weeks ago or yeah. a month mm-hmm. a month ago. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. Like, woof. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I I am blessed with two amazing boys, uh, young men. They are they are kind and thoughtful so they're people. Boys, two men, perhaps. Boys. Mm. <laughs> Do you feel that at this point? Sorry, like, I took you feel real... like you are you have stopped programming them. Oh God, no! Or, no, no, know, no, no, the, the no. shaping continues. No, totally, the shaping continues. Clearly, you just yeah. got to be more devious as they get older, so mm-hmm. they don't notice it as much. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, they're, they're gonna they're gonna come directly and ask for advice. And thing one and I were getting into it yesterday, and he was like, "This is the problem that you guys have." And I was like, "Oh, you're absolutely right." I let's okay, let's talk about working on that and moving forward. Yeah. Look, it's a, it's a process. It's a family. They're always going to be family. They installed the buttons. They, That's, I installed yes. the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> That was such a big theme Ooh. of The Big Sick, which I know you watched last week. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. That movie's so good. How good is that movie? How much does that movie love you? I, it, I, I, I went into that movie. So I, 
like I listened to their uh, Kumail and Emily's podcast for years, right? Oh, okay. The Indoor Kids is a video game podcast about people who like to play video games. It's lovely. In, in my wheelhouse. I didn't know that. Um, but but they like it was such a unexpectedly sweet and lovely and heartfelt and real film, mm-hmm. and they handled like there's there's a turn at the end where they could have done the Hollywood thing and made like every romantic comedy ever. Yeah, no, right. And they, they something in the it, a kiss in the rain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. handled it in a much more humane way. They did. It was honest and real, and I mean, I guess it's a true story. So look, you I know. loved. Um, I was mostly in love with Holly Hunter. I'm always in love with Holly Hunter. <laughs> right now. She's so incredible. Um, I mean, she's, she's a force of yep. nature. She also reminds me of my wife. <laughs> Yeah, she's, tough. She's, she's, she's a tough. She's, she's, she's a tough girl. Yeah. She, she's not she gonna take no go. I, go. I, I walked out of the draft house after seeing that, and I told my wife, "I never want Holly Hunter to be mad at me." <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever. Her or Frances McDormand. I, I think I can handle Francis McDormand's more in the My Mom scale. Have you I, seen the trailer for the Three Billboards New Coen Brothers film? No. Oh, 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 oh. Right after this, we are going to enjoy uh-huh. the shit out of this new okay, trailer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, totally awesome. For me, Francis McDormand is mom is always almost famous. Yes. This is that with a mean edge on her. I don't like mean Francis McDormand. Oh, no. I like, she's, I like, I like again, well-intentioned, I, I love both tough. of those women. Aloof. Yes. I Francis will. Yeah. I will. It's a it, the bucket list for... One of my bucket lists is to have dinner with Francis McDormand and, you know, and Joel. Yeah. Cohen. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, I just, Francis McDormand is one of the greatest actresses ever. And oh. so is Holly Hunter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we showed the boys um, uh, uh, broadcast news a couple oh, that, years that ago. That movie has aged so well. Still a perfect movie. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. I, I had a film studies class where it was about media, portray, media as portrayed in media. And... We watched broadcast news, all the president's men, and network as like a three for oh, what a three wow. and holy hell! I like yeah yeah. Apparently, That's, Ingrid Goes West will probably fit into that in the future. Really, it's all about people in Instagram. It looks so intensely I haven't disturbing. Seen that. Yeah, it uh, it just came out. Yeah. But okay. the big sick. Yes. Really, really amazing. Perfectly cast. And all I keep doing is I keep going, it's mostly heroin. It's <laughs> heroin is doing the heavy lifting. It's mostly heroin. His it's- comedy <laughs> bit, which I think is his albums on Spotify, is a great like background material or or post watching the movie. Highly recommended. Also, it if the movie is inviting you into their lives, mm-hmm. if it's the most personal, I think, mm-hmm. of all the Judd Apatow produced uh, movies. Without a doubt. I mean Without if you'll- it, it, it well, it feels real in mm-hmm. a way that most comedies don't. Yeah, you, and it, it, it's it's a romantic <laughs> comedy about the relationship between Kumail and his girlfriend's parents, in really, fact, for yeah. more than anything else. Right, and there also I found uh, I found R- Ray, Ray Romano, Romano a little tiring, a little tiresome. I think he's like that's just Ray Romano, though. But but, but when that when he and Holly Hunter they play uh, the parents uh, when he and Holly Hunter have an argument, it is one of the most realistically written arguments I've. I've ever seen for a couple who's been together for a long time. I, I thought all of the interpersonal relationships were written in that film in a way that felt it, um, shockingly honest yeah. for a for and a not Hollywood standard movie. either. Yeah, not what a normal. Yeah, I mean they they're they're real and standard for the real world, not for portrayals in film. Was right. what I w- walked away from. So speaking of God, that movie's good. Everybody should no, like, God, look, no, run to go yeah. see it. Yeah, It'll make you feel theaters. awesome about the world. If you want a pick me up, especially after reading the news on any given day, that's yeah. your. <laughs> there is your palate cleanser. Yeah. Um, speaking of. Things that uh, I have th- thought I experienced many of, like romantic comedies, and yet never one quite like this. We went to a con this weekend. Um, a, that a was clan? Uh, no a con. Oh, sorry, it sounded like that. It's like we wait, went to, wait we a went second. To, we went to an anime con. Yes, uh, Crunchyroll oh. Crunchy Expo. Um, they're one of our partners, and they invited us. We had a booth there. It was just in Santa Clara, our first year convention. Like you know, ten, twelve thousand people, which um, it wasn't massive, so it felt really packed, and. I hadn't been to many anime conventions. I have not been to a single anime convention not before. Not as, as embedded and there for so long. Did and you incognito? Uh, I did not incognito. We brought down... I did an appearance at the booth and I signed autographs for about almost two hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I brought down um, the Totoro. suit of armor and Totoro. I, yes. I, saw the, I saw the picture of the Totoro. And, well, and yeah. uh, apparently all weekend long there was a line to take pictures with Totoro. Dude, yeah. But the... 
it was it was amazing uh, just to meet. Like, there are plenty of tested fans there, but also it's anime, right? And it's people who love Japanese culture and manga. And uh, a lot I think of what you would say is, yeah, plenty of cosplayers. But it was incredibly diverse. That was huh. the thing I found most surprising. Uh, look, I, at San Diego Comic Con in a three hundred person autograph line, there's usually five people of color, um, African Americans. Um, yeah. you know, there's. It, at this one, it was probably thirty percent, yeah, twenty five percent, and that's just one one group represented. Yeah. This was it was super diverse and super diverse male to female ratios, um, all all different cultures represented. It was lovely, um, and there was an energy to this specific group that felt re basically. I finished this weekend and was like, we got to go to a more anime conventions because that was just thinking awesome. You guys needed some more cons in your lives. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not like we need more things to, to go travel to but this yeah. one it, for a first year con it was fantastic the energy from people like I said was really lovely um, I, I love I'm going to the only reason No Face didn't go down is that um, he Konayashi needs a, a refurb mm -hmm. um, I need to re-sew all of his costume parts and make put him on a mannequin he, so he, he can travel we learned that he did not travel well when yeah. we took him to San Diego no. that first year but no. even the, the, the artist alley so like a uh, typical big convention has a giant room and maybe artist alley is like three rows of benches in one corner. And here they had one full ballroom that was their artist gallery and, and artist alley. And you imagine like rows of these, these tables, right? Mm -hmm. But they're back to back. So you have one row, people facing one direction and behind them isn't the immediate table of people behind them, no dividers. Huh. And that space, that like three feet of space between the two rows becomes its own little community where people are, and their friends are just hanging out and sitting on the floor and drawing and chatting with their neighbors oh, and walking awesome. up and yeah. down the aisle as opposed to just sequestered sitting at their table well, the whole time. That's what Comic-Con's Artist Alley was like when I was when I first started going 15 years ago probably. Right, like, right, right. Like you had way off on the H side of the hall, it was all a bunch of artist tables and and there were just people sitting there doing sketches and like fans and artists doing sketches together yeah. and it was super super cool so that's really awesome we it was a, a lovely a lovely gathering uh, and i love that so many people got to see and take pictures with totoro yeah that's rad yeah. especially since last week can we tell talk about this we did an unauthorized commentary yes we did yeah we on, did, yeah. Oh, you did the spirit away. away we did yes and, you know, I I had just, because it had been too long, I had watched Spirited Away by myself about three months ago. And there's just no... That is, seriously, one of my top five... I joke that there is 30 films in my top five films, but this one is in the actual top five, and it's never left. It is a masterpiece. I, I um... Yeah, I, we're we're getting to the point that we're gonna start... We're, like, we're talking about introducing it to, to our, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. And... Like so, we've gone through. She's watched Toto, Totoro, and Kiko, uh, um, Kiki's, Kiki's delivery, delivery service, and I think we're going to take her to Castle in the Sky because they're still doing that that Ghibli festival. Yep, yeah. Um. So we'll go see that in the theaters. My and wife just revealed she has not seen Castle in the Sky. I don't think I've seen Castle in the Sky. Wow. Is it safe for a little? I assume so. It looked like it was from what yeah, we could see no, online. Yeah. No. 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 There's. It's no. There's nothing. There's, it's actually much safer even than Spirited Away. Yeah, like, Spirited moving Castle is the one for later. Well, and Princess Mononoke was like when she's thirteen, probably. Mm. Nah, Princess Mononoke Maybe probably eight or nine. Time she's ten. It's nine pretty gory at the first five minutes, though, with the wolf. Yeah, but uh, not but yeah. nearly as disturbing as again all the vomiting and Spirited Away. <laughs> so the vomiting, <laughs> I don't think the vomiting will bother her. I, I think have, it's the I have creepy... seen it unhinge friends oh, really? of my kids. Because I, I introduced my kids to it so early, they were like, "Yeah, cool, that's happening." Yeah, but their friends would be like, Whoa. "Like that was her reaction when we showed her Texas Chainsaw Master." Like, this is really unusual. <laughs> but what's well, his? He died the other day, so we felt it was appropriate. You know, oh. I know. I mean, I think in animation, like the Don Bluth stuff, I think is a good comparison. Like, uh, I think there's a story. Uh, where did I read this? But like, uh, the Rats of Nim. That's a movie where the secret of secret Nim. of Nim. Nim. yeah, yeah. Um, really dark. Yeah, there was an article about. Yes. I yeah. saw that when it came out. Yes. I saw it in the theater. It, it, yeah, there are parts of it just just stick in your brain. The and borrowers and the rescuers. Those mm -hmm. are two different movies. Well, the yeah. rescuers. The rescuers has is it's is the mice Disney one. It's the it's the mice with the um, not Zsa Zsa Gabor but the um, Ava Gabor. Ava Gabor, or, one of the Gabor sisters. One of the Gabors and Bob Newhart, I think. Rescuers. Yeah. Down I, I saw that when it came out too. And and like those movies. There's a there's violence against kids like they they kidnap children in that yeah. movie and the mice have to save them it is like that was intense yeah um, the 
Yeah, there, Disney's weird. You got to be real careful with Disney stuff. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad there is a range that it's all not just saccharine, treacly um, yeah. bullshit. It's funny. I was talking to a friend the other day about what a delight it is to live in the era of the Four Quadrant Kids movie, so that you don't have to go and stab your eyes out watching The Fox and the Hound <laughs> for the fiftieth fucking time. It's also less edgy, less no, risky in some ways. I, I mean, look, Boss Baby has a lot of fart jokes, Norm. <laughs> A lot of fart jokes. I'm not sure how that supports your point. <laughs> well, that, okay, so here, <laughs> but, but, here, here's the but, point: but, is but uh, the, Inside Out also is very emotional. The, uh, inside Out it taught my three year old about emotions and right? how to yeah. manage her, her oh, feelings. Has she, you haven't seen? Um, you haven't watched uh, Where the Wild Things Are either. We have. Oh. that was that was good. But I think it was, she we maybe hit her a little young on that. Oh, she I love it. I love it when Chris Cooper goes. That was my favorite arm. <laughs> um, the one. The one that was surprisingly awesome was Trolls. The oh, DreamWorks I've never Trolls seen that. Yeah. film with um with Anna Kendrick and Justin, uh, Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Oh my god. Is is I expected from the trailer I expected it to be fart jokes and and a d- nightmare and it is an absolute delight. The music's really good. <laughs> they use physicality based rendering so the animation is all it looks like everything's made out of cloth. It's like felted felted mm. cloth and stuff like that and it is it is a delightful story about eating sentient beings to make yourself happy. It's really good. <laughs> Consumerism. <laughs> Highly recommended. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I also, before we left the podcast, I wanted to talk about something that I was doing to the last couple of days. I've been making stuff in here as I do uh-huh. on most weeks, but um, this one I haven't been covering. It's yeah. on your own time. I always feel a little guilty when I don't film. Well, let's talk yeah. about it now. stuff that I'm making. Um, I uh, among the things I became obsessed with from the Stanley Kubrick exhibit, um, one of them was his director's chair. It's a unique. It's a unique setup, right? It has the the he had he had boxes on the side. This is so funny at LACMA where I first saw the exhibit. You see them multiple times now. It is. It's in the entrance way. It's but the front piece of the exhibit, and I don't think they give it enough. Like they don't signify it enough to tell you that this is a one of a kind. There is something special about right. the construction of this chair. It's just that, okay. It belonged to him, um, and 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 it's a it's a lovely chair. I wanted to find. I could see that it was built off a standard director's chair, but not an American director's chair. It turned out that it was a British director's chair. Well, of course, but. I, I didn't realize that there was another kind. And so when I couldn't find it anywhere, I finally did ebay.co.uk and bang, I found two of them and bought them and had them shipped out here. And then because the ones that I bought weren't the same wood and finish as the one that Kubrick used, I had them refinished. Only then to discover once I built the boxes that go into the sides that the chair that Kubrick so this is the chair that Kubrick used for the last two films for Eyes Wide Shut and for uh, Full Metal Jacket Hmm. that I can guarantee because I have pictures of him in that chair on both sets Um, which is in and of itself an interesting factoid Kubrick owned everything on his set that he could and rented it to his own production it's a good trick a small small businessman I strongly recommend it so I feel like I have pictures of well, not, I feel like, sorry. I started, of course, getting obsessive about Kubrick sitting in director's chairs. And so I have photos of him sitting on almost all of his sets. And what you can see when you look at that is that he really liked having a script on the side of his chair. So for a long time, he used a wicker chair. On The Shining, he's sitting in this wicker chair. But he had a vinyl basket attached to the side so he could put a script in it. So clearly, this was a thing he wanted. Um this progression keeps on happening. There's another chair you can see Jack Nicholson sitting in on The Shining that has that is a solid chair with one box on one side, but not the double box. And then when I finally got all the photos back from the from the Kubrick exhibit, I went and took a bunch of photos. Norm took some photos mm-hmm. for me too. I realized that in order to accommodate the two boxes, Kubrick had somebody dismantle this chair all the way down to every slat and put it back together in a perpendicular upright way Holy rather cow. than slightly trapezoidal. So I had to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and this chair is where slightly trapezoidal for support. Yeah, but that was how they were built. Right. So, um, but they wouldn't. It wouldn't. I mean, when you look at the chair and there are photos of it from the exhibit, it is. It's straight up and down, straight up and down. In both axes. Parallel. And right. I had to. I had to oh, go that and is, do that in order to. It's not a detail you, that registers. No. And then as I'm looking at photos close up, I see that they use dowels to attach the boxes onto the side. But then I see marks that it's clear. Like I can see the same holes from nail removal on that chair as I have on mine from going through the same oh, process. And in this, I always. Oh. I feel like I'm talking to somebody from 45 years ago about what they were doing. Right? Well, like somebody spent a couple of days on this. I mean, this. You're, you're doing you're you're doing ar- like archaeology in place, right? Yeah. It's it's like it's like the NASA folks who've gone through and recreated the Saturn V so they could build the SLS to figure out how to uh, how we did stuff on the Saturn V so they can apply that to the SLS. And, yes, and very Sherlock Holmes. That's very. It cool. feels like it. It you're, feels like it. So it's very. I, I'm very close. I've been dyeing the fabric. You can see it hanging over there um, to match the faded green fabric that's on the thing. Mm. Um, I have templates for the uh, Stanley Kubrick writing. The two boxes are radically different. Mm-hmm. Um, and, in terms and you of said the you cutouts built the boxes, them, really? it's yeah. not just like you put, took dimensions, and they are not built like normal boxes. No, they're, they're very poorly built. Um, more than that, they're built using not plywood but luon, which is a cheap veneer ply. And I went and bought a sheet of luon and cut it up. But I'm trying to find grain that kind of matches the grain that they had. Uh, and oh, first of all, I also built the boxes. I built these. I built. I'm making two of these chairs because I bought two of them. Why make one when you can buy two for it, double the price? Exactly. It only takes. It only takes a little more work to do two of something. Yeah. So I built a set of boxes that were wrong. So I had to throw those out and start from scratch. But the Luan that I was using didn't here in America. I, I went to Baronio Lumber and I spent half an hour looking through all their Luan to find a sheet where the grain was actually close to the original because I'm like that. I know. And then. I didn't get to my satisfaction. But when FBFX, we just put this video up yesterday about me getting carved out of foam. And there's my foam cut out, yeah. right? You should put that behind the door in the bedroom. <laughs> um, you, you're welcome to borrow it anytime you want. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm in mean your bedroom, Adam. <laughs> um, like put it but, behind the shower curtain and the with the mirror. I don't know. There's, when yeah. when I'm just going to ignore this and move on. It's probably best. When Andrew and Grant from FBFX packed up that foam master and sent it to me they sent it in a box a cardboard box that was lined in luon whose grain much better matched the grain from the kubrick exhibit because it was british British wow and so uh, i immediately grabbed those pieces and cut them into smaller chunks (laughs) you see the world a different way adam because you saw the packing material for something that contained something awesome yeah and and registered yeah totally i mean but i mean this is it right this is finding the Graflex flashlight for yeah. Luke's lightsaber. Totally. This is I, I just the, love going through that yeah. as many times as I can because I find it so deeply satisfying. <laughs> the cockpit light that's R2-D2's. Yes. Like, yeah, you're doing archaeology. Yes, what you mean to refer to is that R2-D2's little moving oh, light no. is the reading lamp from a Vickers Viscount 1970s airplane. That's a cockpit light? No. Is it not in the cockpit? No, it's not in the cockpit. It's actually re- it's from the it's from oh, the cabin. It's, from the, it's, it's a, a cabin reading lamp. Oh, I thought a Vickers was a was a pew 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 airplane, not a not a swoosh airplane. No, I think I, I. It makes sense. They're, they're, it looks like you're past the yeah. portcullis of my knowledge. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> Portcullises. That's what that's what they, they're, that's what we have. Um, um, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, we're this, gonna see at, this, at some point when you finish the yes. project, we will do a piece on it and we'll take a look at it. Uh, but oh yeah, 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 it, we, it, we yeah. totally will. I've, I'm I'm making one um, for another fellow Kubrick fanatic, and I'm hoping that he will come and participate yes. in the unveiling. That'd do, be awesome. Do you that feeling of feeling bad when you don't make the video for the thing that you're making? Like, like, do you feel like that's a new thing for you? I assume. I mean, it's oh, f- no, four no. or five years old at this point. It's as old as tested. Tested, yeah. Yeah, because I feel like there's always there's material to be gotten, but I, I there I it changes the way you build things. It does, and there are times I just want to. Uh, there are times well, I just want to be here and noodling mm-hmm. without any pressure. Yeah, it slows everything down, and there's pressure to get it done in the time that you have the shoot. I, look, I also love building to and, story. I also love yeah. building to tell a story about building. Yeah. I like that's absolutely thrilling, and we got a bunch of those yeah. in the can last totally. week. Yes. Cool. Okay. 
Yes. That's as good a uh, place as any. What's on the site this week? Speaking going? of which, yes, go watch that video. We visited FBFX. Uh, they shipped that life-size atom foam atom. So what wasn't in the video was how that was carved. That they have a giant robot arm, like an industrial robot. But we arm. just didn't get f- we yes, didn't get footage, footage of, of it that carved. being carving. So we have to get them to send us some of that. Yeah, yeah. So that actually is they they, they use a multi-axis robot arm to a repurposed mill out. auto industry. Robot. Right. Wow. And they yeah. have like a like a Dremel on the end that just they, <laughs> uh, like a ten-inch round-ended half-inch milling bit. Jesus. And it takes about a day to carve. And they actually, this is uh, 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 expanded polystyrene foam, like standard packing foam. Yeah. Um, but they use like a more rigid polyurethane foam when they're doing um, mannequins for movie stars. Mm-hmm. So you, like conceivably right now, they could be just cranking out an army of yous and you'd never yeah, know it. Clearly they could they just are. be like, the, like, the, like the, the, the army in China. The, totally. The right, right. Army. That's how I'm going to be buried among like 3,600 <laughs> versions of myself. A, I think that's a fantastic idea. <laughs> Someone gets making those glasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. Norm, thank anything you. else on the site? Uh, yeah, we have some other projects. We're showing off some uh, hydrochroming uh, later this oh, week. Um, and I will either this week or next week we'll be announcing uh, the member gift for te- Tested Premium members this Ooh. year. Uh, so check that out on the site. It's going to be very cool. Um, I'm still playing PUBG almost every night. You I like that Google Battle Royale. Uh, Will s- live, s- live streams, we video gaming about this? on, on no. Twitch. We'll talk about it in another episode. Okay. Yeah. All right. You'll hey, like this has been 45 minutes of politics-free entertainment. We'll see you next time. Trump sucks. <laughs>